So hi dear nurses, I am Swati Jesh, uh, nurse trainer from BMAX Academy. So today we can discuss about some important MCQs uh, from recently asking prometric of the exams. Okay, so we can go to the questions. So first one is 28 year man admitted to the orthopedic ward complaining of thrombing pain in the casted leg. Which of the following nursing intervention uh, should be taken first? So the options are remove the cast, notify the doctor, assess the pedal pulse and administer PRN medications. So here the question is uh, about thrombing pain uh, related to fracture and cast. Okay. So we need to know about what is the importance we need to check related to casted leg. Okay. So we need to check this five P's that is pain, pala, pulse, paresthesia and paralysis. So if uh, we are giving a discharge teaching to the client, so we need to importantly give some education about the assessment of this about this five piece. So pain level we need to assess. So there is more pain in the casted leg there that should be treated better. Okay, so uh, then pallor, pulse. So pulse we can we can tell to the patient to assess the pulse and we can teach them how we can assess the pulse. So distal part of the cast is important. So distal part will be there. There will be any cold tem temperature is there. So any uh, pulse changes there. We need to teach them how to assess this uh, condition. Uh, we can tell them to return back to the hospital. Okay. Here the answer is assess the pedal pulse. Next question. Doctor write new order uh, restraint for psychiatric patient and uh, that is overly aggressive and which of the following indicate that the nurse should do? Okay, the option call doctor while patient aggressive to do uh, that himself. B, apply the order one time only if needed. Uh, option C, close patient room and do not apply restraint. Option D, express that not acceptable and complains about your supervisor. Here the uh, question is about restraint. Okay, for psychiatric patient we are regularly give the restraint. Some of the aggressive patient we are giving this restraint. So this have one order. Okay, order for restraint this is very important. Under nine years of old we need to change the restraint every one hour. Okay, every one hour we need to change the restraint. Another time we need to give a new restraint means we need to get a new prescription. Okay, so here 9 to 17 years we need to change the restraint every 2 hour. Clear? So 18 years and more we need to change this for every 4 hour. Okay, more than this time we are giving one restraint means that is a malpractice. Okay, so uh, you need to uh, notice this kind of uh, things. Here the answer is apply the order one time only if needed. Okay, we can move on to the next question. Classical sign of adrenal insufficiency. What is adrenal insufficiency? Okay, Addison's disease. Okay, there is proper decreasing. There is deficiency of mirlocorticoids and corticosteroids. Um, glucocorticoids and mirlocorticoids we can see here in adrenal insufficiency. The options are hypernatremia, hypotension, hyperpigmentation and weight gain. Here the answer is hyperpigmentation. We can see in Addison's disease. These all are the main important sign we can see in Addison's disease. Browns pigmentation of skin, changes in distribution of body hair, GI disturbances, weakness, weight loss, postural hypertension and hypoglycemia. So one of the important signs is Browns pigmentation of skin. Okay. What is adrenal crisis? That is Adrenal crisis means uh, you can see the patient with profound fatigue, dehydration, vascular collapse, then renal shunt, decreased serum, sodium and increased serum, potassium. So this all are the condition. Mainly you need to notice in adrenal insufficiency, we can see this bronze pigmentation or hyperpigmentation of skin. Okay. So we can move on to the next question. Patient with TB going on isoniazid medication to prevent peripheral neuropathy what should be included in care plan advice okay the options are instruct low protein diet avoid sun exposure too much provide vitamin b6 intake then increase fluid intake okay so isoniazid we have five first line drugs for tb 
So one of the main drug is isoniazid. So what is the side effect of that? Okay, side effect of vitamin B6 is one of the important side effect is peripheral neuritis. According to uh, this administration of this kind of medication, isoniazid, we need to administer continuously vitamin B6 to the patient that is pyridoxin. Okay, pyridoxin, it helps to relieve the patient this kind of complication like peripheral neuritis. Okay, other drugs, other mainly first line drugs of TB is isoniazid, rifampicin, Piracinamide, streptomycin, ethambutol. Here, isoniacin have skin rashes, hepatitis as side effect, mainly peripheral neuropathy also occurs. So, we can give along with vitamin B6 that is pyridoxin. Then, rifampicin, main side effect is red, orange color urine and abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, hepatitis, thrombocytopenic purpura. So, uh, this is a condition uh, related to clotting factors. Then, uh, piracinamide that is caused arthralgia. Main side effect is arthralgia. So, we can give NSAIDs along with that. So, NSAIDs will reduce the joint pain. Then, streptomycin, vestibular or uh, auditory nerve damage. Uh, auditory nerve damage is a very important side effect of streptomycin. Then, ethambutol, it is related to ocular problems okay so it will causes uh, eye damage to the patient we can move on to the next question which of the following types of iv fluid is considered as hypertonic so we have three types of iv fluid isotonic hypertonic and hypo uh, hypotonic solution so from uh, below mentioned uh, options which is the hypertonic solution so here 0.33 percentage of NO solution, 5 percentage of NaCl solution, Ringer lactate solution and Ringer solution. So from this answer is 5 percentage of NaCl solution. So what is isotonic, what is hypotonic and what is hypertonic. So isotonic is the same concentration of the blood concentrations of plus uh, blood plasma level concentration is same as the fluid that is isotonic so that is a normal saline main example is 0.9 ns that is normal saline then uh, ringer lactate so this two are isotonic solutions okay then hypotonic solution hypotonic solution means it is the fluid concentration is uh, less than blood plasma concentration that is hypotonic that level is less than isotonic solution clear so the example is d5 uh, water then 0.45 so uh, here isotonic is 0.9 so less than that that is 0.45 that is hypotonic solution then uh, hypertonic it is higher than the blood plasma the fluid concentration is higher than the blood plasma here the examples are 3 percentage ns and 5 percentage ns clear so these all are the important questions you will get in the exam so, so you can take the notes Next question, which of the following vitamin supplements can decrease the incidence of neural tube defects uh, such as anencephaly and spina bifida in newborn or congenital anomalies? So, the question related to con congenital anomalies like spina bifida and anencephaly like spina bifida. So, other congenital anomalies also we can prevent it with a maternal supplementation of folic acid. So, uh, options are vitamin A, riboflavin. Uh, folic acid and vitamin D here answer is folic acid and multivitamin so uh, in pregnancy time we can give to the mother um, iron uh, folic acid and multivitamin tablet to prevent this kind of congenital anomaly mainly the neural tube defects the proper formation of neural tube is not happening okay in the in the in uh, womb itself the baby is not developing a fully uh, not having a fully developed spinal cord here the opening in the uh, head region caudal region we can see the anencephaly and spina bifida the fusing is not happen in the end region like uh, lumbar region we can see the spina bifida okay spina bifida we have three types that is very important spina bifida occulta spina meningeo -mylo, meningocele and meningeo -mylocele. okay here spina bifida occulta there is a dimple uh, in the back when we are inspecting the back of newborn we can see a dimple in the lower section of the spinal cord there is a patch of hair also present in spina bifida occulta this is meningocele and meningeo -mylocele. meningocele means there is only a sac protrusion there is no uh, a spinal contents in that okay in meningeo milo milo related to nerve okay 
so my meningomyelocele is there is nerve involvement in the sac okay so spina bifida occulta spina um, then uh, meningocele then my meningomyelocele okay so this is spina bifida occulta this two is togetherly called spina bifida cystica okay so the spina bifida cystica divided into meningocele and meningomyelocele clear so we can move on to the next question during the night shift routine then a nurse is found that the patient complaining of sleep disturbance due to frequent voiding several times at night which of the following is the best condition that describe patient complaint okay so dysuria polyuria nocturia and hematuria so what is dysuria dysuria means painful urination okay so anuria means absence of urination okay diuresis that is increased production of urine then dysuria that is painful urination then anuresis involuntary urination that is bedwetting anuresis also we can call it as bedwetting it is in small kid it is 4 to 5 years after 4 to 5 years also it is present means it is related to some neurological conditions okay so glucosuria glucose present in urine hematuria means blood in urine oliguria decreased urine production less than 400 ml in 24 hours oliguria means total 24 hours there will be less than 400 ml of urine okay polyuria increased urine production is called polyuria so these all are the main urinary abnormalities we can move on to the next question a 53 year old man present in transferred to the recovery room after coronary bypass surgery he is on mechanical ventilation and chest tube brain is attached intravenous line is there nasogastric uh, tube and urinary catheter are intact and what is a short term goal of care needs priority so this is a scenario type question it is not a direct question you need to understand in any kind of patient we need to give priority for their safety safety and comfort okay that is a priority always so here the patient is on mechanical ventilation having chest tube urinary catheterization uh, iv line so all the things is there the patient's short term goal is to provide appropriate positioning and promote rest that is a short term goal what is a long term goal here so short term means suddenly that time the patient what's need that is short term goal clear so that is appropriate position and a prompt rest okay so here long term goal means we need to prevent the infection at the in injection incision site okay that is a long term goal short term means suddenly that time the patient is needed which type of care that is we need to give promote rest clear so we can move on to the next question during cardiopulmonary resuscitation cpr for a 75 year old man in the emergency department the doctor introduced himself as a leader of cpr okay what is the most appropriate leadership style for this situation it is related to nursing management uh, so one of the one of the finest and important question related to nursing management uh, so here the question we need to um, apply this autocratic this autocratic leadership style is we are using in an emergency situation okay emergency situation the leader is a captain of the uh, procedure some of the procedure if in an institution there is leader is leading that particular team means that is called a autocratic what is democratic democratic means leader is taking opinion from the subordinates also or the team members also that is a collaborative procedure for about every successful uh, institution that is important that is democratic but in emergency situation always we need to take this autocratic leadership style clear so bureaucratic is there is a written policy written as uh, laws and statement for doing this kind of leadership lazy sphere means lazy sphere is a um, leader will be uh, not taking any job any responsibilities just uh, only giving responsibilities to the group members and uh, lazy leader like that you can remember so mainly importantly asking this autocratic autocratic means uh, the emergency situation they are using this autocratic there is only one direction will come from the one side so the leader is taking responsibilities that is or the autocratic okay so you can take the notes from this 
uh, this is simple notes uh, for, for uh, four of this leadership styles you can take the notes from this okay uh, during health education for a patient on monoamine oxidase inhibitor maois the nurse instruct him to avoid certain food that can interact with the maois okay so food containing which of the following contents should be avoided so maois is it is a main uh, uh, main uh, depressant anti depressant drugs so maois along with which drug which medicine which uh, food we need to avoid that is a question okay alcohol caffeine tyramine and folic acid so along with maois we need to avoid tyramine containing food okay tyramine containing food will cause hypertensive crisis if they are taking along with maois it will cause hypertensive crisis hypertensive crisis mean it is an emergency hypertensive emergency the bp is systolic more than 180 and diastolic more than 120 okay so this is the symptoms main symptoms uh, related to hypertensive crisis headache lightheadedness heart palpitations nausea anxiety bloody nose and shortness of breath so these all are the important signs of uh, hypertensive crisis so maios monoamine oxidase inhibitors it is a main uh, antidepressant so along with that we cannot take thiamine containing food if it is taken means the patient will get hypertensive crisis with this kind of symptoms